There's really a ton of good piano exercises out there. Some really important staples like scales and arpeggios, some finger pattern ones like the Hannon exercises. I'm not saying don't do those because you definitely should at some point and they're well worth it. But in this video, I just want to give you a few different kinds of things that are maybe a bit more fun and musical and focus on a few different aspects of your musicality. Using some backing tracks as well to make things a bit more interesting, you can play around with these exercises a bit, use your ears and take them as far as you want. Focusing on some basic musical skills, there's some finger work, improvisation, and some chord work too. These are some beginner piano exercises that sound good and will teach you a few things about how to play along the way. Let's do it. This channel's your guide through developing all the different skills and knowledge you need to become a piano player with a bit of freedom. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss out on anything that you need to learn. So this video is a kind of follow up to another video I did on how to start playing piano and there's a couple of similar exercises in here but there's lots of different ways to use them and take them further. These are all designed to be musical, get your fingers working, start developing a sense of rhythm, control and timing, get you using your fingers cleverly, using your ears, getting some basic coordination between your hands, learning some basic shapes and positions on the piano, getting a sense of musicality, learning some ways that we can approach playing certain things on piano, plus loads more. Like I said, we're gonna be using some backing tracks to make it a bit more fun, and each track has its own video linked down in the description for you to play along to as many times as you like. Or if you'd rather download the actual MP3s, you can buy them from our website, which is linked in the description too. So there's four sections, each with a bunch of different things to try out. Let me know down in the comments how you get on with each one. So I'm going to start by talking about some of the basic technique and control and skills that you're working on by doing these exercises and then I'm going to run through each exercise and different ways that you can vary it and take it further. So to start with, the first exercise is going to revolve around using each finger to go up and down some notes on the piano. We're going to do it to a backing track in a bit to make it more interesting. There's some important things to do with basic technique, how to use your fingers, hold your hand and sit so you can float comfortably over the keys without any tension. If you've not even gone up and down using all five fingers yet, or you try these exercises out and it feels rigid and your wrists drop or you can't play each note individually and cleanly, then please look at the how to start playing piano video which I've got linked down in the description below as that's going to help you out a lot. So I'm going to take finger number one and put it on C. This is the C above middle C, that one there is middle C. And if you don't know your note names yet, I've got a link in the description to a video on how to do that. So once your thumb is there, we want the next fingers, two, three, four, five, to just fall into place onto the next white notes, like that. Try and keep everything relaxed as you can, your wrist up above the keys. So when we're playing piano, we often use finger blocks to help us move around and not get our fingers mixed up. So one of the first things to do is to learn to be able to stick in one finger block. That means that for everything we do at the moment, your thumb is the only finger that's gonna play that note, this finger is only for that note, and so on through all your five fingers. So we're gonna try this along to the backing track now, and that's gonna help you develop your sense of rhythm and timing, as well as being able to listen to something else whilst you're playing, which is really important for musical situations where you're playing with other musicians. So these first few exercises I'm gonna give you, you can try it with right hand and then left hand separately, or the other way around, and then hands together. Let's just start off by listening to the backing track for a second. So try and feel the pulse of the backing track with those clicks. And then what we're gonna do to start with is play a white note going up and down every other pulse, like this. Go up and down as many times as you need. Get it comfortable, really focus on trying to listen to the track as well as playing and staying in time with the track. Once that's comfortable, like I said, left hand, hands together. Then what we can do is we can keep it going but a bit faster by playing every pulse, okay? 
So obviously we can we can count these beats as well, but I don't need to think about that right at the moment. So playing every pulse would sound like this. And then once you've done that, left hand and then hands together. You don't have to try this yet, it might be a little bit fast, but if you want to, you can try playing in between the beat, like this. Now ways that can help you build up some stamina with this kind of thing, you can try this for each kind of speed level, is to not try and go constantly to start with. You could just do one run up, pause and then come down afterwards or you could do one run up and down wait a sec and for the next cycle to come and then do it again and then eventually you could try doing two in a row three in a row and then see how long you can do it for if anything starts to feel tense or rigid or you lose the timing stop pause and have another go in a second try and make sure everything feels nice and relaxed don't just try and push through and go and go and go if it's hurting or anything like that so a couple of other things you could try with that to start developing some other touches on the piano is to try something called staccato um, which is Basically what we were doing is called legato, where you play nice and smooth. And staccato is like short, sharp notes like this. The timing would be the same, you just don't hold each note for as long. So for this, your wrist kind of like pops up a little bit more like that. You can try them, do them softer and louder, or maybe you could go soft to loud as you're doing it. That's playing with the dynamics, and you can control that by how much weight and pressure you put down on the keys as you're playing. Everything still wants to be relaxed, even when you're playing louder. Still relax, you just kind of drop the weight a bit. You don't push down, you just drop the weight a little bit heavier. Again, don't wanna to get too in depth with that at the moment, but if you can start just trying to have a play with it and get a feel for it, that's a really good starting point. Make sure everything feels relaxed, as I keep saying. If you do already know how to play a C major scale, then you can do that over the track as well. Again, you can do that slower or faster, whatever's good for you. And if you don't know how to play that scale yet, don't worry about doing that. It's just something that you can do if you do know how to do it. And that's just gonna be another thing that helps you work on your timing and control and your stamina. The next thing I wanna get you to do is to take that five note scale and try some different rhythms. I'm gonna give you a couple to try out, but then I want you to try and make up some of your own. And that's kind of like a way into starting improvisation. So here's the first pattern I'm gonna give you. So I did that with both hands, but you might wanna try it hands separately again first and then together. I don't wanna overthink counting rhythm at the moment, but I want you to just make sure that that starts on what we call beat one, which is where you feel the cycle looping and starting again, the beginning of that. So just listen to that pattern and try and get it by feel and just literally copying what you hear. Because learning music is kind of like learning a new language and a big important part of learning a language is mimicking people that can speak it already. So here's the next one. So that one, like earlier, you can do one cycle of and then build up some stamina and keep looping it round. This one essentially revolves around a long note and then a short note. Long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. That can help you start moving your fingers a bit quicker, but it's not every note moving quickly, it's every other note. And again, you can try those two with the other feels, the staccato and the louds and softs. And those kind of techniques are some of the ways that you can control music to actually sound more musical. So after that, you can start trying to come up with your own little patterns that sort of loop around like the ones I just did, but like little variations. Then you can start trying to improvise a bit more. So you can hold notes for much longer and you don't have to keep looping the same pattern. You can just experiment going up and down the whole time. I'll give you a couple of ideas quickly.
I was just going up and down there the whole time, but just changing the note lengths and the rhythm and the pattern is just creating these new melodies. So that is one way that you can start off improvising. One method of learning to improvise is to give yourself boundaries to work within and to get comfortable moving around in. But then you can start removing some of those restrictions. So for now, let's keep sticking with notes that are just next to each other in the scale. So no leaps like that. These are called seconds, by the way, because we're using two notes next to each other. But now free yourself up a bit to make some different kinds of patterns by maybe using the same note more than once in a row. Or not just continuously going up and down. Remember, we're always trying to stay locked in with the backing track and make sure that you're paying attention to those basic technique things that we talked about at the beginning. Also, when you're improvising, what you really want to be doing is trusting your inner ear. That'll tell you whether you decide you want to go up or down or to hit the same note again, whether you want to hold a note for a long time or a short time, whether it's loud or soft. But you don't really want to try and overthink it at this stage. Just try and loosen up a little bit listen to what you're playing and see what comes out. One of the things you want to try and learn with music is to get used to what it sounds like when you're in different parts of the scale. Now, I'm not going to get too in-depth with that at the moment. All I'm going to say is that the note C, because we're playing in what's called the key of C, is going to be the note that sounds like home. So if I play a melody and it finishes on a D, it will sound unfinished. But if I finish it on the C, it will sound complete. Another thing to think about, if we compare it to language again, is that you don't want to try and keep talking and talking and talking. You want to say a little simple sentence and then take a breath and then say another little simple sentence. So when you're happy with that, have a go with your left hand as well. You could try it hands together, that's not absolutely necessary, but if you want an extra challenge, then do it. And then the next thing to do would be to get rid of the restriction of only using notes next door to each other in the scale. So you can play around with the bigger leaps. So that's a good thing to get your ear accustomed to, what it's like when you reach up what's called a third, so going over the space of three notes, a fourth, or a fifth. So remember, a big part of learning music is to get the sound of it in your head and through experimentation and paying attention to what it is that you're playing, you will get used to what these different sized gaps sound like. Making it fun as well is a really good way to begin training your ears and getting used to the sound of music. So again, just have a play around, experiment and see what you can come up with. And lastly, if you want, you can then extend that to experimenting with the whole of what's called the C major scale, which is basically all the white notes from C to C. If you're not sure what a scale is, the simplest way to think about it is a group of notes that you can use to make music with. So in this case, it's all the white notes, none of the black notes, and C is the home sounding note. So I would stick in one what's called an octave for the moment, and an octave is just C to C, which because it's using eight notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I would stick in one octave to start with, and then you can try different ranges of the piano and see what sounds you can get out of different ranges. And as you're doing this, you want to think about different finger blocks now. So I don't want you to overthink it. All I'm going to say is that if you see a group of notes that you want to try and play with, let your hand mold into that shape. So we started off in this finger block, and we did everything we could in there. And then if you decide you want to use these four notes, then you might move to somewhere like this, for example. So you do something here, and then you might move up here. So keep your hand nice and relaxed, maybe leave a pause in between moving one hand block to the other for now. Hand block, finger block, same thing. I don't want you to overthink the finger blocks thing at the moment, I just want you to concentrate keeping your arm relaxed so you can move your hand around different places comfortably and just try and get your hand in a position where you can reach all the notes that you want to use for that bit of the music. Keep an eye on where in the scale that you're playing stuff Keep your arm moving around nice and comfortably. 
locking into some finger blocks, keep your hand above the keys, keep everything nice and relaxed, and don't try and play anything too complicated just yet. Let me know in the comments how you got on with that, or if you came up with any really cool patterns or ideas you can do over the backing track, or any other little interesting tricks you have to make your improvisation sound cool. For this next section, we're gonna use a different backing track. You can use this to do all the same five finger exercises as on the last one as well though. I'm gonna use this one for two different things. Firstly, to give you a few different finger patterns to try and push your finger coordination a little bit. And then to do some more improvisation, but this time it will have a different sort of sound and a different feel about it. So we're gonna start off again in a block of five fingers, but this time it's all the white notes starting from D. I've changed to a Rhodes electric piano sound for this one, but you can do it on whatever you've got. So this is the first five notes of a different kind of scale. Well, this one's actually called a mode, technically, which uses all the white notes from D to D. It's called Dorian, but honestly, you really don't need to worry about that right at this second. That's not something that you would usually learn right at the beginning. But as it's just all the white notes from D to D, it's really easy to see straight away, and it's really fun to play with. So I said that one was called a mode, technically, and not a scale, but all intents and purposes, it has the same use. It's a group of notes that we can use to make music with. And we're just using it as a tool to experiment and be musical with and have some fun with, and as a tool to develop some finger skill. And it's kind of close to a minor scale if you've heard of that, but again, don't worry if you haven't. It's just like a darker sort of sound than a major scale, which is the one we used in the last section. So there's loads of really good established finger exercises out there. And this is just something a little bit different that you can do that's gonna work with the backing track, maybe be a little bit more fun and musical to play and they're just gonna get your fingers working in a way that I know beginners sometimes don't think to use them. So the first exercise is gonna go like this. And then down. So starting on D, we're going up a third, and a third is something that goes over the space of three notes in the scale that you're using. So to D to F. Then we're gonna go down a second, which is next door, F to E, and then up a third, down a second, up a third, and then we've reached the top of our hand block. And then we reverse it, we hit this one again, down a third, up a second, down a third, up a second, down a third. So as you're doing this, it's gonna be a bit of a test for your fingers, perhaps, because you might just wanna be going to these other fingers in between. And as you're doing it, remember to try and keep your wrist above the keys, especially when you get to these weaker fingers up here, and focus on keeping your center of gravity, your weight over the top of the finger that you're using. So weight over this, shift a little bit. It's only a small little movement, but over the top of this one, then to here. I'm exaggerating it a bit for effect so you can see it better, but it's kind of like rocking your hand a tiny bit. So you can do that to the track like this. Every two beats. Leave a big gap, wait for it to come around. Then try every beat. That last one might be a bit hard, but give it a go. If it feels strained, then, then don't worry about it. You can come back to it another time. If we are counting, it's one, two, three, four, and then that would be one and two and three and four and. So going on the ands in between the beat. So the next one is to build up some finger strength going back and forth between two fingers. So we're gonna do it between the first two notes of our hand position like this. And then we do it on the next two, between the next two fingers. Then the next two, then the next two. So each of those I started on the lower one, then went up and came back down. But then we're gonna come down the finger block, and this time we start on the higher one, low to high, like this. Then the next two, next two, next two. It's gonna definitely be harder on these weaker fingers, so you might not get to the, the third speed level on this. That's absolutely fine. I'm just putting it there in case anyone wants to. So here's what it will sound like to the backing track.
that third one, after doing it fast, I actually left a longer gap in between because it might get a bit too hard then. So the last pattern I'm going to give you is a slightly longer one, one that sounds a bit more like a melody, and it goes like this. So we're going up in thirds. So it's up a chord shape. And once we fit that top one, we come back down a third. Up a second to four. Remember sticking in a hand block the whole time. So from third finger to fourth finger. And then down in seconds. Up a second. And then you can loop it and start again. So I'm going to give you three levels of doing this one as well. So like with the earlier exercises, if you can only do one in a row to start with, do that and then leave a gap and then have another go and then practice being able to do two, three in a row until you can just loop it and loop it. Always sticking in the finger block, always keeping your wrist up, making sure your arm's feeling like it's holding its own weight up, making sure everything feels relaxed. If it starts to feel tense, then that's the time to pause and check that you've got all the technique right and then have another go in a sec. One more thing you could try with that is to come up with your own little patterns as well and see if you can loop those around. So as for improvising on this track goes, I want you to try and follow the same process as we did on the last one. So use the going up and down in that finger position as a launching pad and then start experimenting with patterns. You can also just use some of those finger patterns that we were just practicing a minute ago as a launching pad as well. The only other thing I wanna really say for this one is because it's a different sort of feel, I want you to try and push the rhythm a little bit and be a bit more experimental and see what you can come up with. I'll do a short demo of some ideas that might get you going. So going up and down. Hitting some of the same notes twice. Different kinds of patterns, similar to the ones we were using before. Kind of like the pattern we were doing. Remember this sounds like home now, D. Another thing you can try is to get into a groove of something that repeats and then vary it slightly. And then try using a wider range of the scale again, like we did with C. So going all the way from D to D, but remember you can go down this octave as well. So this might be a little bit harder to make sound good than just using the first five notes. And this B might sound a little bit odd to your ears to start with, but if you have a play around, you might come up with some cool ways that you can make it sound good. And remember, like the last one, what we're after is when you're moving around, find a new block of notes that you wanna rest your hand in. So you might be in this hand block here, and then you might move to here. Remember sentences and gaps. Move a hand block. Nice big gap there. Remember the whole time trusting your ear as to whether you want to go up or down. There's no real wrong answers here. All I want you to do is focus on nice relaxed hands, 
making a sentence and leaving a gap. It may sound a bit dodgy from time to time, but that is okay when you're first beginning. That's absolutely fine. It will take some practice to get used to the sound a bit. And remember, you can give yourself those little limitations. It's often easy to make something sound good like that before you give yourself a bit more freedom. So do that for as long as you like. That's just one to kind of have some fun with, explore the keyboard a little bit and focus on some nice relaxed technique and finger positions whilst you're doing it. Often improvisation can be a really good way to just loosen up your playing a little bit, focus on your ears and make a connection between what you're playing and the sound that you're making. So this exercise is a little bit different. We're gonna be playing a chord progression, but then breaking the chord up in different ways to create different rhythms and different patterns. So this is just the kind of thing you would do if you were playing an accompaniment style piano. We're gonna have chords in the right hand and we're gonna have bass notes in our left hand. So if you haven't played chords before, this might feel a bit weird and uncomfortable for your fingers to do. You might end up pushing the wrong notes down by accident. For more of a detailed breakdown, go to my how to start playing piano video, which is linked down in the description below. But just to quickly recap, let's say we're playing a C major chord, for example, which is every other note from C. We're not gonna be using that in progression, but just as an example, we're gonna be using that shape. Let's say we're using fingers one, two and four. Now the tricky thing is that as you push, try and push all three down together, you might push these fingers down by accident. So the idea is to get those fingers there, try and keep these ones loose and relaxed. It might be a bit tense if you try and properly hold them up, just keep them relaxed and use your wrist weight to put everything down at the same time. If you try and do your fingers, they're all gonna go down at different times and, and do that. But as if you use your wrist weight, Keep everything relaxed. <clears throat> Just a tiny bit of firmness in your fingers to make sure they don't buckle. Then they should all go down together. It may take a bit of practice to get that comfortable before you do the rest of the exercise because for a lot of people that feels really weird to start with. So this is gonna be in the key of C major, which just means we're using the notes from the C major scale, which is all the white notes for the song. And we've got four chords. So the first chord is a G major. If you don't know your chords yet or how to build them or anything, don't worry, just kind of take my word for it at the moment, this is what the chords are, and just use them as a tool to get to grips with playing these kinds of shapes on the piano. And you can learn more about how they're built another time. And that is G, B, D. So think about how the shape looks. This is in thirds, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's every other note. And we're gonna use fingers one, two, and four to play this one. And then we're gonna go up to an A minor. So if I hold these ones out of the way, you can see A minor is gonna be the notes in between that one, that one, and then the one to the right. So finger-wise, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use fingers three and five for this one because they switch comfortably, and then we're gonna bring the thumb up. And then the next chord is actually gonna be an F major. So if I show you an, what an F major looks like, it looks like this. It's F, A, and C, but with chords, what you can do is, once you've got the notes of the chord, you can then spread them around the piano in different ways. So for this one, we're gonna take the F and we're gonna play it up there. Now that's called an inversion, but you don't need to learn that right at the moment. For now, just think of it as the notes from that chord broken up in a different order. So finger-wise, we're gonna use fingers five and then two and then one. So this one's got a slightly different shape. Now we've got a bigger gap here, a fourth. One, two, three, four. And then that third again here, one, two, three. And then the last chord is also gonna be another chord with the notes broken up in a different way. So it's a C major, and if you look at a C major, that's what it looks like normally. C, E, and G. But then if I take this G and I put it underneath, just a lower G down, so it's still the same notes, therefore it's still the same chord, they're just in a different order. So the C, we're gonna play with thumb on the bottom, and then third finger on the C, and then fifth finger on the E, like that. So when we move 
from one to the other, that's called a chord progression, which is just a series of chords in a row. And what that does is that adds some structure and some movement to a piece of music. It's the harmony to go along with the melody, although we're not playing the melody at the moment, obviously. So what we're aiming to do is we're aiming to use those finger positions to move around smoothly from one to the other. So on the G major, moving up to the A minor. Now for this one, you're going to have to lift your wrist up to switch your second finger to go there and move your fifth finger up there. So keep your wrist nice and relaxed, wrist above the keyboard, up, and when it's relaxed, then your fingers are free to remold and reshape into the new position. And then we're gonna do the same thing, getting back to the C, up, move over a bit, remold into that C position, which is finger three in the middle, thumb on the bottom and five on top. So then our left hand position is gonna be playing what's called root notes of those chords. And all a root note is, it's the note that is the name of the chord. So the first chord was a G, we're gonna play a G in our left hand, and we're gonna use fourth finger, so that way we can reach all the root notes for that chord progression in one hand block. So it would be G, next finger along up to the A, down to fifth finger on the F, and up to thumb, finger one on the C and then loop it round back to the fourth. So first of all, we're just gonna try that together. Now we're gonna start counting a little bit. I want you to count for four, nice and slow. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and back round again. Now what I want you to do is, start getting into the mental mindset of thinking ahead of where you are. It's a really important piano technique for keeping up with everything that's happening. So particularly with this one, you're hot, you've got four beats to think about the next one. So as soon as you hit this chord, you've got those four whole beats to be looking and thinking about how you're gonna use your fingers on the next position. Now we're gonna start adding some rhythm to it and we're gonna try a few different rhythm patterns out. So piano is actually a percussion instrument technically, and we often wanna think about rhythms between our hands like playing drums. So this first one, we're just gonna play a pattern that's gonna go like this. I did this pattern in my last video, but bear with, we're gonna do a bunch more in a second. So if we break that up, I'm just locking into those positions which you've already done and then my hands are going together, left, right, left. On the G, together, left, right, left. Move position, together, left, right, left. Move position, together. As you're thinking about rhythm, I want you to think what effect that has because eventually you want to be able to just hear a rhythm and be able to copy it on the piano. So the emphasis here is in the right hand. Whenever you pay, play a thicker amount of notes and a low note together as well, you're emphasizing a part of the rhythm. And then when you play like a single note on its own, even if it is a low one on its own, that's a slightly weaker part of the rhythm. So when we do this, this is a strong beat. Weak, strong, weak, and so on. So the next one is gonna be the same together, left, right, left, but we're gonna do a slightly different pattern with it. Together, right, left, right. So after you've done together, there's more of a delay before you do the right, and then there's a quick left, right at the end. I don't wanna start counting this one because I think that's gonna be more confusing if you've never done that before. I want you to just feel the rhythm. I want you to just kind of be a parrot and copy it. Now, if this is weird doing it on the keys to start with, you can try it just by tapping it on your knees, just like this, together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right. Or start slower if you need, and then speed it up. And then once you've done this on the progression, it sounds like this. And overall, it just has a slightly different feel to the first one we did. The third one is gonna have the same feel as the first one we did, the more straighter rhythm but we're gonna break the notes up in a slightly different way, which is something you can do sometimes and it just gives you a slightly different texture. So, we're, instead of doing together, left, we're gonna to go together and then just the thumb of your right hand. 
So it's a single note, but it's higher up, like this. Together, thumb, and then we're gonna do the other bit of the chord in your right hand, like that, and then back to your thumb. So you hit the whole chord with your left hand, then just the bottom note, and then the upper two, and then the bottom note again, and then change chord. Now you can do that where you don't hit the whole chord to start with, you can just go back and forth between those two, that works too. Or with the chord it just sounds a little bit thicker, there's a bit more emphasis on that bit. Or you could mix and match that up a little bit. The last one's a little bit different and this chord progression played in this rhythm is actually from a specific song. So if you can hear what the song is, then write it down in the comments. And we're actually gonna count for this one because we're gonna stab every other chord in between the beat. It's gonna sound like this. By the way, sometimes when you're going from this F to the C, if there's a quick movement, you can use fingers one, two, and four on that, and then move back down at the end to your starting position for the G like that. So for this one, the count would be, if we're counting one and two and three and four and, like that, we're gonna start on one, obviously, so one and two, and then the and after two is when we hit the next chord like this, so one and two and. Do that again, one and two and. And then we count three and four and, and then we go to the F on the next one. And then on that F to the C, we do one and two and, like we did on the other ones. So overall we've got this, one and two and, three and four and, one and two and three and four and I'll do it together quickly again one and two and three and four and 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 remember if you recognize what song that sounds like let me know down in the comments so try and come up with your own little patterns as well. The reason I've given you quite a few patterns instead of just one to work on is because I want you to get a broader idea of how you can feel and hear rhythm and recreate that when you're playing this kind of piano. If you wanna push it a little bit further, you can do things like doubling the note in the left hand, playing octaves, which is a common piano player's trick. You can break up the notes of the chord in any which way you want as well and use different positions for the chord. Let me know how you got on and how far you managed to take that exercise. So this section is gonna be on the black notes and I wanna focus on three things. The first thing is just gonna be some more improv, so just like what we did on the other sections, except it's gonna be on a different sort of sound and a different sort of feel. The second thing is getting used to the feel of the black keys, because they do feel a little bit different. They're slightly thinner, and you just need to get used to the feel of them under your fingertips. And if you're in this finger block, for example, you need to get used to holding your hand in a slightly different way, because if you go too close to the edge, what you're doing is you're pulling your thumb away so you can't reach it. So you've got to get used to positioning your hand comfortably so you can reach every note in whatever block you're in. And the third thing is to repeat rhythmic phrases but using different notes as a way to practice moving around finger block positions and improvise. We're gonna make this note E flat, our home sounding note at the moment. And remember, if you're not sure how to name the notes or the black notes in particular, then I've got links in the description that are gonna help you out with that. So E flat's the home sounding note, and then we can use all of these black notes. Now, if you've ever done this on a piano, you'll notice it sounds really good. There's five different black notes, and this forms something called a pentatonic scale. Again, don't worry about the theory of, or anything like that at the moment. Just know it's a scale with five notes in it. This is actually a minor pentatonic scale, if you want to know. And 
we're going to be using this to improvise on. So the thing about pentatonic scales is they sound really good over lots of kinds of music and they're really great for improvisation. And the reason I'm doing it on the pentatonic scale, which happens to be all the black keys, is so we can get used to the black keys, obviously. But also it frees you up to not have to worry about which notes you can and can't use. Sometimes when scales have a combination of black and white, you have to get used to not hitting the wrong notes. But this is obviously easy just to stay on the black notes. And obviously it gives you a slightly different sound to the ones we were improvising on earlier on. So we're going to take exactly the same improvisation principles as we were in the last exercises. But we're going to do it in this hand block. So our first five fingers from E flat, finger one, two, three, four, five. Now this one, because it's a bit of a stretch out there, I don't want you to hover over it like you were in the last one. I want you to hover over these ones and then when you use it, lean over or like move your wrist over the top of it a little bit. So do some stuff on here. If you want, you can just go up and down like you were before, get used to that. You can try out the patterns we were doing. do all of that stuff here as well that would be a really good thing to do as well actually and then we're going to improvise using this hand position nice and slow again start get a bit faster if you want position then. So experiment with the rhythm and the groove of that loads. Again, there's no wrong answers. All these notes are going to sound really great over the whole thing. Remember, you can do things like play with long notes and short notes for effects like long, long, short, short, long, short, that kind of stuff. Loud and soft, repeated notes in grooves and things like that. Have a little play then you can have a bit of a jam over a wider range of the keyboard. Nice and slow, remember, leaving gaps. Move hand block. So I'm gonna do a whole improvisation video just on this backing track because there's actually a ton of different approaches to it. And this is a really fun one to do it with because it's really easy to lock into the scale that you can use where every note sounds really great. So the concept for this improvisation is to repeat patterns of rhythm. So you could take almost any rhythm pattern and do this. I'm gonna just choose one now to do. So the little rhythmic phrase is da, 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 da. Don't worry about counting it or anything. I want you to feel the rhythm. And then you can almost take the hat around any hand position in any format and it's gonna sound good. And you can use that to come up with loads of really cool melodies. So if I take that pattern and then apply it to this finger block, I could go up and then jump back to the bottom. Or I could go up and then jump to the middle one. I could move hand block. Move again do it a different way. And all of a sudden, I've got a way of making phrases that are going to link together really well. You can start adjusting the rhythm a little bit as well. Maybe add a bit on every so often, like this. come up with other patterns as well.
come up with different patterns as well. And then you can do things like repeat the pattern a few times and then end the whole phrase a different way. So using these short little rhythmic phrases is a really good way to make what you're improvising make sense and flow on from each other and connect. And in the context of a full freer improvisation, you can use those as a launching pad, like I did with that last one, to end it in a slightly different way, then come up with a new idea, use that as a launching pad. But if your ear tells you to do something different, do something different. But it's just a really nice idea starter a lot of the time and a way to make what you're playing make a little bit more sense and be a little bit more musical. If those are too fast, you can always start off with a slower, simpler pattern and have exactly the same effect. So I hope you had some fun with and got something out of those exercises and don't forget to play along to the backing tracks which are all linked down in the description. You can use them for those specific exercises or just jam on them as much as you want. And remember these exercises are not replacing any of the important things like scales and that. It's just something different you can do and have some fun with that focuses on some other aspects of your musicality. Just some ideas to actually get you playing, starting to develop some technique, some rhythm, some control and using your ears. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer or if you have any other ideas for some beginner piano exercises that sound good. Thanks for watching. Please give the video a like if you got something out of it and subscribe for more content that's going to help you develop your piano playing. See you in the next one.